The moment had arrived. By the early 90s, almost every corporate boardroom was talking kids. What they needed now was a better understanding of their new target customer. Time to send out the spies. Market researchers begin to scrutinize every little nook and cranny of a child's life. We're really observing. We're really observing. We're watching them for all of those nonverbal signals. We've done interviews in the bathroom, we've done interviews in the kitchen, outside on the back deck. And very importantly, how do they go about getting what they want? In the early 1990s, companies unleashed an army of researchers in a full-scale effort to better understand the new decision shapers, the kids. At Doyle Research, we conduct research where it makes sense to conduct research. It's wherever the experience takes place. So it could be in after-school programs at boys' clubs or girls' clubs. It could be summer camps. It, it can be at the park, at the community swimming pool, wherever they exhibit a natural behavior, whether it be um, shopping or hanging out at the playground. Chris Efkin is a senior scout for Doyle Research in Chicago. One of their specialties is observing children. Okay, well, come on in. All right. Well, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Did you have a good day at school? Yeah. yeah. Doyle's pioneering work has attracted some heavy-hitting corporate clients. Nestle, Nabisco, and General Mills all competing for some kidfluence action. Ladies, when it comes to after-school snacks, is it something that you do just out of habit, or is it you have a snack only when you're hungry for a snack? Kids now decide 76% of all family snack food purchases. What door do you walk through when you come home from school? The garage door. The garage what door. What do you usually do? Where do you usually go looking for Why is it that you eat the same cereal every day, but you don't eat the same snacks if every day? If you say Go-Gurt, does mom hear Go-Gurt? Do you ever go anyplace else? Does the brand matter? Do you ever go to the refrigerator or to the freezer? Do you ever sneak things into the cart? And we do our best to let them know that um, you're not going to turn on them in any way. What they say to you stays with you, and it doesn't go back to the parents. Well, Kelsey, show me your bedroom. Let's take a look at, at where you hang out and what all is in here. Wow. And we're just not here to pass judgment. We're just here to better understand the reasons why they feel that way. How do you feel about going to school and, and everybody seems to have something similar from the, the same store? Um, actually, that makes me feel like I'm fitting in. Why do you want to fit in as opposed to stand apart? Um, I'm kind of shy, so I don't like to be standing out very much. Once we understand the reasons why, we can then help our clients to, to better understand the personal relevance and the reasons why a product fills a certain need or perhaps doesn't fill a certain need and, and how they can fine tune their message to, to better target the, the youth consumer. Are you more of a, more of a girly girl? Shopping with dad versus shopping with mom. When do you wear these? Okay. Uh, dresses. Ever wear them? At what store? Who are you, you with? Most what, what kind of girl are you? If kids do it, marketers are recording it. They are dissecting it. It is a research effort which is unprecedented in scale, scope, and intrusiveness. Conducting our research in the school setting uh, is of value, certainly, of course, to us because we have the opportunity to hear from kids in an environment that they're very comfortable in and familiar with. See you in a little bit, Miss Renner. Iris Schroka runs the Hypothesis Group, a market research company in New York. Their clients are blue chip and high status like PBS, Disney, and Quaker Oats. Here we go, come on. Schools like this one in New York open their doors for any research project deemed educational. There's usually a project a week, and the school gets paid. There, there are some amounts of, of, of 
uh, gifts that will come to the school, sometimes in, in the form of cash, sometimes in the form of, of materials, but primarily our interest is in, um, in serving, uh, to, to, to examine issues for children, tastes, trends, habits, likes and dislikes. The reason why each of you is here is because we really are interested in what each of you has to say. Hypothesis group sell themselves to the corporate world on their psychological training. We use um, our training as developmental psychologists and social psychologists to more richly and deeply explore what their hopes, dreams, and aspirations are. Has anybody got a DVD player? Yes. Anybody got a portable DVD player? They videotape everything for their corporate clients. Then they analyze the tapes for clues and triggers on exactly how kids influence their parents. How do you get this stuff? At first, I put it on my list so maybe I could get it. Or I beg on my knees to get it. Let me hear what that would sound like. Come here. <laughs> what do you want, Ryan? Uh, an iPod. Yeah. <laughs> this is valuable information for corporations who are targeting kids. The most successful campaigns are those that have provided kids with the appropriate language to use in the NAG event, if we can call it that. 1998. A U.S. market research company, Western International Media, released a study called Parents, Nagging Kids, and Purchase Decisions. And it wasn't a study to help parents cope with nagging. It was a study to help corporations help children nag more effectively. What it discovered was a child's effective nagging can boost sales in almost every category, from restaurants, movies, to theme parks, by a whopping 30%. A number that could translate into billions of dollars for corporate America, if it can get the kids to nag well. Since the nag factor study came out in 1998, companies are fueling the carnival like never before, doubling the amount of money they spend marketing to kids. Now $15 billion in the U.S. alone. It's working. One out of every two visits to fast food restaurants is now because children nag for it. Yeah. What do you guys see? Do you know where we are? McDonald's! Oh, you always go here because why? Because we have fun! What the kids are exposed to is often drive some of the places that they go to. And mom is certainly put in a position of offering her kids choices, but those are choices based on what her kids have heard about. Carol Schmidt works for Doyle Research in Chicago. So, tell me about how you negotiate. She's become the specialist in what's called the fast food drive-along. How do you have fun here? Because when we eat ice cream. Where do you ever hear about chicken nuggets and Happy Meals? When we go to a birthday. Her fast food clients want to protect their bottom line. So they hire Carol to figure out how the back seat rules when deciding where to eat. She finds sort of comfort in offering her kids places to eat at that are, uh, no, that are known to the kids, that are familiar to the kids, because it makes the kids happy, and uh, which then in turn keeps the peace in the household, as she said. Want some fries? There. What's working in these companies' favor is 70% of parents now say they give in to nagging. Has there ever been a place that um, you wanted to go to, but you changed your mind because of what the kids wanted? Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll do that a lot. The industry doesn't want people to know how big it is, how much money they're spending, how intensive their research is. They don't want people to know about their, their techniques. Harvard psychologist Susan Lin wrote Consuming Kids, a book with a clear message that kids didn't take over, they were taken over by corporate interests. 
It's all part of her continuing anti-marketing crusade, a call to action she started five years ago. As I was researching marketing to children, I came across the Golden Marble Awards, which were the advertising industry celebration of marketing to kids. And I was so appalled that they gave awards for manipulating children for profit that I, I thought this would be a really good focus for a demonstration. And this is really the beginning of a national movement. It's called a campaign for a commercial free childhood an organization that wants to see the government regulate the business of marketing to kids. What we, we believe in is the rights of children to grow up and the freedom for parents to raise them without being undermined by commercial interests, without being undermined by greed.